so as you can see by the giant mess here, um, we've started to get the 3D printer wired up. This is a really cheap ATX power supply I pulled out of some old um, HP, I think. I don't even remember what it was. It's a really cheap best tech power supply. It's like 300 watts or whatever, but it's fine for testing. Um, it's probably even fine to run this off of, especially because the hot, the heat bed is, um, AC. And runs directly off the mains with its own, um, power cord that you can see it goes to the uh, solid state relay. Um, so especially because this power supply doesn't need to power the massive heated bed, um, you can see we're pretty good. Um, so we do have motion. Um, we can, now I have to be ready to stop the printer hurting itself, but, um, I will show you that we do have motion. So if we auto home, see the bed, everything's moving in the wrong way. You can see this starts moving, that was moving. Well, you can see that move right there. And the bed starts moving down. And if we stop it with the auto leveled sensor, then it'll stop. So you can see this moves in the wrong direction compared to this. This moves in a fine direction because I haven't mounted the thing yet. So we can just mount this in whatever way this moves. I think it was moving this way. So we'll put this, I guess over there is where we're supposed to put it, which means that we'll need to extend the wiring. Um, yeah, the fan wiring also is up on the bench to be soldered. Um, So, because that needs to be extended, so yeah, that's a few things to do, but overall we're actually in pretty good shape. Um, you can see a USB cable, uh, which is what this is, this white cable here, um, makes really good motor wiring cable because it has four um, contacts and the color codes are pretty darn close to the color coding on this stock cable. Um, you just replace blue with white, which makes it really easy to keep track of what you're wiring where. I um, mean, yeah. Again, I need to invert all of the X's in software. Because well, not all of them, two of them. Or I, I might actually just move this, but, but I definitely have to invert the Y axis. Um, but actually, I don't know if any of you guys have experience with Marlin, but can you tell me, is inverting the Y axis the right thing to do here? Or should I like change, or is there a way to change the like a uh, printer, like um, geometry type, I guess. Would I change the geometry type like away from a Prusa printer? and to whatever kind of geometry this is. Um, I may also try to just get hold of um, Ivan Miranda's um, Marlin build, if I can find it. Um, because I, well, this actually is not a bad Mar Marlin build, and I do have auto-leveling configured um, in a way that seems to work decently well-ish. I don't know why I haven't actually tried to do auto-leveling because we're clearly not at that point yet. Um, oh, and I have tested it up. Tested it up. Uh, I have tested it and the heated bed does heat up um, as you would expect it to. Um, and it actually heats up quite quickly. I think it heated up more quickly than the heated bed on the old um, Pindu, despite that one being like a quarter of its size. Um, which, you know, that's the big advantage to um, AC hot tubs. I mean, it pulls like 600 watts or something. It's insane, but um, at least it heats up quickly. Um, oh yeah, then I have this, which is a power button, which I have to wire up this entire thing. There's gonna be a Raspberry Pi 
an inhuman and octoprint, and that'll be able to intelligently control the ATX PSU, which will allow me to switch it on and off um, remotely um, via octoprint, but I also wanted a power button here, and this does have a little LED ring around it, which will also have light up, just, I don't know, why not? Um, Yeah, I've done a lot um, since you last saw it. Um, I realigned these, but I don't even know if I showed you putting these on at all. These are at weird angles now, I know, but it, tr trust me, it's aligned a lot better than it was. Um, and I'll do fine tuning once I start to get printing if I notice terrible artifacts, but if it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> We're going to leave it for now. Um, yeah, you can see there's a glass plane on top of here, which I got cut at a glass shop. I tried to cut my own glass plane, and that was somewhat disastrous. I bought this stupid thing, which is a glass cutter. I think it was like $5 from Home Depot. It's a husky glass cutter. Um, and I think I paid like 5 or 10 bucks for a pane of glass um, that... Yeah, this one was like 12 bucks or something. Maybe, well, actually, maybe I paid $5 for the pane of glass and $5 for that. So it ended up costing me $10 to crack a pane of glass from the Home Depot. And this one pre-cut was also like $10 or something. It wasn't... I mean, it wasn't that much of a waste of money. It was more just a waste of time. And it created a giant mess because I had broken glass to clean up. So... You know, I'm, I'm not going to try cutting glass again anytime soon. That was not a fun experience. Um, yeah, you can see that it's a working printer, I guess. Kind of. It moves. So if you constitute moving as working. I also have to figure out how to mount the extruder, which is here. Uh, it's going to mount, like, here-ish, probably. Um, but yeah, something like that, and then I need a longer PTFE tube, but I ordered in a longer PTFE tube, and we'll just go boat in, because, yeah. How, the, how, how else am I gonna do it? If I don't go boat in, it's never gonna work. Um, yeah, so, um, you know, re really trusting the auto-leveling a lot because I have no way to manually level this bed because building a way to manually level a bed this big is just going to be a giant pain. I mean, I could do it. Just drill some holes in this and get these through and put something at the end as, like, feet for this to sit. I might actually do that because I'm going to need spacers anyway, so I may build adjustable spacers. Um, it needs about an additional 20 millimeters to reach the hot end. Um, yeah, I, I, I may actually put, like, little things... I, I actually do have a design in mind now that I uh, talk it through. Um, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but maybe I'll edit in a really bad doodle in, like, MS Paint or something of what I'm talking about. Um, yeah. This is 8.50. Okay. At 8 minutes and 50 seconds, you should see that. If you don't, then I clearly didn't remember. Um, and... Yeah, once I do the manual bed leveling method thing that I'm talking about, um, because that'll be useful, um, so I don't have to put all my faith in auto bed leveling, um, because I'm sure this bed is not very flat, because this mounty thing is really janky. Um, uh, yeah, so, so once I get that done, um, I just have to fix the software to do a few little more small wiring things. Um, configure the Raspberry Pi, then we're good to go. I would say I'm probably three quarters of the way done with this project, if not more. Um, I've really made a good amount of progress. Um, and it's gonna be a very big 3D printer. Um, is it gonna be bigger than a CR10? CR10 is, I think, like 350 by 350. 
would have it just been easier and I mean it would have been more expensive but what, I mean I'm in a couple hundred dollars for this plus the FL Sun that I scrapped I mean admittedly the FL Sun wasn't working that well but I'm you know if you include the price of the FL Sun then it's way easier and cheaper just to buy a CR10 and the CR10 is still plenty big um or like on any cubic mega or whatever. I don't know how much those cost. I think those are also about 300, 350. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would maybe just do that because again, I'm probably in this for a hundred, 150, maybe even $200 on top of the cost of the FL Sun. I'd, yeah. So aluminum is somewhat expensive. I'm probably in $50 for aluminum. And then I've gone through most of a sp spool. I, I've gone through at least a spool of filament, prob if not more. Um, across a few different spools that all had little bits of them used. Um, I've gone through... The auto level sensor was like 10 or $20 on its own. The glass was $20 if you count the one that I broke. Um, I mean, I'm probably in closer to 150 than 200, but still. Again, it would be, just be way better to buy a CR-10 if you were, if you did not have a broken FL sign. Um, but I mean, it, it, it has been a fun project, and if it doesn't work great, then I only use it for things that I really need to use it on, and I use the... Um, and, I, and I go to the makerspace and use their Ender 3 that I still have, and that's what's printing in the background, if you can hear it. Um, I'm delivering it to them tomorrow because it's, we, we had a, yeah, um, I don't know. It's a really long story while I, while I, why I still have it, but we're do, I'm, I'm giving it up for tomorrow, which is going to be sad. Um, so I'm doing a massive push on it right now. With my filament this time, actually, because I do, I'm doing it in wood fill. Um, you'll probably see that, um, because I'll probably record a video of it and just upload it at a later date or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's, the Ender 3 will probably actually end up being my main printer, because this is just not sturdy enough. You can see it jiggles when I, I'm not even putting that much force on it. Um, this is not gonna be a very high resolution printer, but it should print okay-ish quality and it's, and it, especially for massive objects small quality details should not be that big of an issue um so yeah that's um my big 3d printer um thanks for watching subscribe if you like my big 3d printer and want to see more stuff about it um, and other projects that I do that may or may not be finished because the Pi laptop that I made a video on like three months ago is still sitting in almost exactly the same state it was three months ago because I decided making a Pi laptop isn't really that useful a project um, but I may finish it eventually because it's almost done um, but yeah if you want to see other cool projects that again may or may not be finished um, subscribe I guess. I also have a Tesla coil that I was going to build. I don't think I ever made a video about it. Um, and it was a kit, and I think something on it is broken. I think something shorted out. Or maybe I just didn't make very good solder joints because the legs of the capacitors were super corroded. And I might have to sand them down and try to re-solder it because the solder wasn't taking very well. Um, that's what you get when you buy a $20 Tesla coil kit from China. Um, it looked really cool in the picture, and I'm sure if I could get it working, it would be really cool. But the instructions are utter garbage, and the components are totally salvaged from something, and they're super beat up and have corroded legs, and it's just really janky. Um, yeah, I mean, you'll also see the project that I'm printing the thing for, and that should be a quick and easy project, um, I say. As though I expected the Tesla coil to be a quick and easy project, but th this one should legitimately be a quick and easy project. Um, and you should see that. But that is really all I have um, coming up.
but yeah so, so make sure to subscribe if any of that interests you um and i don't know the video quality is going to stay terrible like this but for the time being but i don't know so i'm at least editing somewhat now even if my editing skills are terrible and let's see if youtube actually lets me upload this video for once instead of making me stream it like i did the other one um because that would be great okay that's all um The one thing I will mention, actually, that I haven't mentioned yet, is the auto level. Oh, oh, there it goes. Ah. The auto level sensor. You can see this is a connector. It fits into the connector there, but it wasn't working well, and that's because it needs 12 volts. So this is a floppy disk power connector and you can see I have it like jumbered up like that and I think it'll stay like that because I intend to use ATX PSUs like this and fortunately ATX PSUs have floppy connectors um I did buy a logic level shift converter for uh, like a really low power boost converter um like really low power and really tiny um for five that um could do five volts to twelve volts um, but I don't think I'll bother using that. I'll probably use that in a different project. Um, because I have a different project in mind and this solution works well enough. So, you know, don't fix it if it ain't broken. Or do fix it if it ain't broken because why not? Okay, that's all. Bye.